to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I'm a family nurse practitioner. This is part two of basics of IV drip calculations. Basically, how do you find drops per minute when the question is asking you that? Okay, I will be breaking it each problem down step by step so that you know how to find the answer every single time. It's super easy. It's as easy as just setting the problem up correctly. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to part two. This is basics of IV drip calculation. Last week I did another video. I will put them in a playlist. All my dosage calc are in a playlist. So make sure you check that playlist out. Also, if you do not know how to set up dimensional analysis, I highly recommend that you go check out my DA 101 video. That's dimensional analysis 101, where I go over my ABC method and how to set up dimensional analysis. If you don't know how to set up dimensional analysis, you will be completely lost in this video. And I do not want that for you. This video is made to make things super easy and clarify things for you. All right. So in this video, what I'm covering is drops per minute. So that is what we are covering drops per minute, finding drops per minute. How do you do it? How do you set it up? First practice question is an NP orders administer 125 mLs per hour. The drop factor is 15 drops per milliliter. How many drops per minute will this infuse at? So with dimensional analysis, you always want to ask yourself, what are we looking for? And that's what you're putting on the left-hand side of the problem that you're setting up. So we are looking for drops per minute. So drops per minute is going to go here on the left-hand side. And whatever we're looking for here, we're going to put at the top. And what I mean is I'm talking about the drops. So we're looking for drops. We're going to put drops here. Well, what in the math problem has drops in it? We have drops right here, 15 drops per milliliter. So we're going to put 15 here. What's drops married to? I always said, I said in my previous video, when you have these two fractions, we'll call them fractions. When you have these two fractions, they are married together. You don't separate them. They're in their honeymoon phase, okay? They're in their honeymoon dating phase or wedding phase, whatever. You can separate them. So you're putting 15 drops and then it's married to ML. So we're gonna put MLs here at the bottom. Now we need to find minutes. We already have the drops up top, but how do we get minutes to the bottom? So if I have milliliters here, I need to cross out milliliters by using something that contains milliliters in this section here. So I have 125. So I'm gonna put 125 and that's married to one hour. Well, how do I go from hours to minutes? One hour has 60 minutes in it, and then I can cross out hours. So I'm going to cross multiply here, 15 times 125 equals 1,875. And we divide that by 60, you get 31.25. When you're using drops, you always want to round to the nearest whole number. Now, two is not greater than five, so we're not going to round up. We're going to stay where we're at. So this becomes 31 drops per minute. Practice question number two. Also, my my friends make sure that you hit the like button on this video that you subscribe these videos you know I love to help you out and these videos are here make sure that if you're finding value in this video that you hit the like button and you subscribe I have a passion for education but these videos take a lot of sacrifice. I work full time. I have a part time job and I have a YouTube channel. So this takes a large portion of my time creating the videos, brainstorming the content, then editing the videos, then uploading and thumbnails and all of that. So YouTube takes a significant portion of my time and all I'm asking for in return is at least hit the like button and subscribe. It helps my channel grow. It helps the algorithm. It helps other students learn also from my channel. Okay. Practice question two. The order is a thousand milliliters of normal saline at 120 mLs per hour. The macro drip is 10 drops per milliliter. What is the drip factor in drops per minute? Once again, what are we looking for? We're looking for drops per minute. Drops per minute goes here on the left. What is going to go up here? Drops. What is drops married to? One ml. So 10 drops per milliliter. We need to cross out milliliters. So milliliters. And where can we get milliliters? unit of measurement right here at the infusion rate. So 120 ml over one hour to cross out the hour. We go one hour has 60 minutes and then we are cross multiplying. We get 1,200. So you divide 120 by six or 1,200 by 60, whatever, whatever's better for you. If crossing out that zero is going to trip you up, then don't even cross it. And then the answer is 20 drops per minute. Practice question number three. Healthcare provider orders infuse 1,000 milliliters of lactated ringers over 12 hours, use micro drip tubing. 
what is drops per minute. If you notice here, we don't have a drop factor. So real quick, I did want to take some time. If you are struggling with nursing tests and how to take nursing tests and you're struggling with how to answer NCLEX style questions, I do have a course that I created called Nursing Test Secrets NCLEX Test Taking Strategies. This is not an NCLEX review course. It's how to take nursing tests. It's a very affordable course. And I put everything in the course in regards to how to take nursing tests that I wish someone had told me when I was in nursing school. So again, if you're struggling and you're just not understanding how to take nursing tests, make sure that you check out my course because I really think it can help improve your nursing test scores. It can also help as a refresher for before you take the NCLEX and just NCLEX test taking strategies because have you ever known people that are very intelligent but they're awful test takers? Even for the NCLEX, it's important that you are a good test taker. So whether you're going to take your NCLEX, I recommend that this will help you brush up on your test taking skills or if you're in the thick of nursing school, then I also recommend this course. Drop a comment below and let me know what semester of nursing school you're in. And why don't we have a drop factor? Because in last week's video, I said you had to memorize what the micro drip tubing is, what it always is. So drop a comment below real quick if you remember what the micro drip tubing number was. All right, so remember micro drip is always 60 drops per milliliter. Micro drip tubing is narrower and so it produces smaller drops. It's used for children and infants or to infuse sensitive medications where precision and the flow rate is essential. I understand that maybe you stumbled across this video you weren't able to watch last week's video because you just happened to stumble across because of the YouTube algorithm. But in last week's video, I mentioned that you need to remember that micro drip tubing is always 60 drops per ml. Okay. If you didn't know that information, you wouldn't be able to get this answer right. So we're going to go with drops per minute and we have 60 drops over one ml times 1000 milliliters over 12 hours. So this one's a little bit different because we're infusing a thousand milliliters over 12 hours. So we don't have that one hour anymore. It's important that you read the question and you use the information. It makes sense, right? We have 60 drops per milliliter and we have a thousand mLs that we are dividing over 12 because we're taking that huge 1000 mL bag and we're infusing it over 12 hours, but we still need to get drops per minute. So one hour has 60 minutes, you multiply across, you have 60 thousand over 720 or 6,000 over 72, whatever, you know, floats your boat. The answer you get is 83.3333333333333. You get the point greater than five. You round up. This is not greater than five. So the answer is 83 drops per minute. Practice question four. The healthcare provider orders 50 milliliters of ampicillin, 250 milligrams to infuse over 30 minutes. The drip factor is 20 drops per milliliters. What is the drop per minute rate? We, again, we need drops per minute. Before you start, you know, worrying or, or freaking out, always write what you know. And what you know is you need to find drops per minute. So start there. Drops over minutes equals where's we where do we have drops we have 20 drops here it's married to this milliliter so 20 drops over milliliters we need to cross out milliliters and then we look at our problem again we have a 50 milliliter bag that we need to infuse over 30 minutes now sometimes in dosage calc you will get extra numbers that you're not going to use so when they're saying 250 milligrams and this i don't see the name of the medication so this is not necessarily ampicillin but this is when you're in the hospital this will not um, come together what you do is the or the order will be let's say 250 milligrams in this case so this has let's say that this has 250 milligrams but this is a powder and this is just a dextrose solution or whatever solution that you're using to mix the antibiotic or whatever medication. So first you squeeze this bag and you squeeze the solution into the powder and then you dissolve the powder until it's a liquid and then you flip the bag basically upside down so that you can get the liquid from here to go in here. This is where you put the tubing that goes to the pump or connects to the patient, right? So this has the 250 milligrams, but we're not using this for our problem. We're, what we're using is the fluid that is uh, is going to be in here. This is what we're using. That's a 100 ml bag and what I was saying is 50 mls, but 
script. I don't know if th that visual helps you understand that the 250 milligrams is just telling you the strength of the antibiotic. Like when you pull the vial out of the Pyxis, that the dose of that little vial has to be 250 milligrams. But what we're really worried about is the volume that you have to infuse this amount of volume over that 30 minutes. So back to the problem. The other way to easily know you're not using the 250 milligrams at all and why I love dimensional analysis is you don't need to cross out milligrams at all. So you can just eliminate it. There's nothing anywhere else where you would need to cross out milligrams. So you don't have to worry about it and you're not solving for milligrams. So you don't have to factor it into your solution. So 20 drops over one ml times 50 mls over 30 minutes, right? We're worried about how long, and again, this is 100 ml, so I don't want to confuse you guys, but anyways, so we multiply across 20 times 50 is 1,000 divided by 30 or 100 divided by 3, and once again, we get 33.33333, and the correct answer is 33 drops per minute because this is not greater than 5. Last question of the day, practice question number 5. The order is 1 liter of D5W with 20 mil equivalents of potassium chloride to infuse over 24 hours. So once again, you have this huge bag, it's one liter, and inside the bag is 20 mil equivalents of potassium chloride. Do you see anywhere in the problem that you have to worry about canceling out mil equivalents or are we solving for mil equivalents? No, so don't stress when you see a different unit of measurement. The drop factor is 20 drops per milliliter. Also, the other thing that you need to remember is that one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. I love the metric system because it's very simple simple. When you're moving from liters to milliliters, you move the decimal to the right three places. So one, two, three, and that becomes milliliters. You just need to know that one liter is a thousand milliliters. Here we have fine drops per minute. We have 20 drops per milliliter. The 20 drops is married to one ml. We need to cancel out mls. So we find that 1,000 mLs we're doing is married to 24 hours. We're infusing 1,000 mLs over 24 hours. We know that one hour has 60 minutes. So 20,000 divided by 1,440 is 13.88. This is greater than five. So it's going to be 14 drops per minute. If you're still here, thank you for staying until the end. As a bonus to you because you stayed until the end, just like a Marvel movie, I will give you access to this PowerPoint. I will send you a link. Email me at bridget at nursingwithprofessorb.com and I'll send you a link to access this PowerPoint. Please like, subscribe, uh, drop a comment below if you have a suggestion for a, a certain type of video. Thanks!